Welcome back to Jay's Smokehouse and the History of Cannabis series. Cannabis in the Roman and Muslim Empires. This episode will be covering from 200 to 1600 AD. In 200 AD in China, there was a surgeon named Hua Tuo. He's credited with being the first to use wine and cannabis mixed up to be an anesthetic. What he would do is he would reduce the cannabis to a powder and then he would mix it with the wine and he would administer this before he performed surgery. He actually used this concoction as an anesthetic before he performed some of the first organ grafts and also resectioning of intestines, among many other things. The Chinese term Matsui for anesthesia actually means cannabis intoxication. Also, the Roman Emperor Lucius Domitius Aurelianus, he lived from 214 to 275 AD, but it's known that he imposed a tax on Egyptian cannabis. In 751, there was a battle, the Battle of Talas. This battle was the Tang Dynasty of China against the Abbasid Caliphate and the Tibetan Empire. The Abbasid Caliphate and the Tibetan Empire actually won against China. This is where they believed that the Muslims captured prisoners from China and they divulged the secrets of making hemp paper. Between 800 and 900 AD, there was an Islamic and an Arabic physician that really counteracted themselves with cannabis. The Islamic physician was named Rasis, and he loved cannabis. He prescribed it all over the place. But then the Arabic physician Ibn Washia, he warned everyone about cannabis being potential poison to everyone. So this is really where that debate started, is between 800 and 900 AD between these two physicians, it seems. Then between 1000 and 1400 AD, we really have the golden age of sailing. Before they had hemp sails, they had flax sails. And apparently the flax sails would deteriorate after about three months due to the salt in the sea. However, the hemp could last much longer. But I believe the hemp sails started in Italy and really made their way around the Mediterranean and then made their way up to Northern Europe. In 1533, due to the demand of hemp sails, Henry VIII actually decreed that every landowner set aside one-fourth of an acre for every 60 acres that they owned to grow hemp to meet this demand. And then even 30 years later, his daughter, Elizabeth I, she actually reimposed this decree. She would actually penalize him, I believe, five pounds for every one-fourth acre that they were not actually growing cannabis on. So she took it a step further than her father. Now on to the last one that really intrigued me the most, William Shakespeare. They dug up a bunch of pipes that he was supposed to have used in his garden. They tested a bunch of these fragments of these pipes. They found three different residues, tobacco, cocaine, and then also cannabis. But cannabis was prevalent eight times more than the other residue. So it seems that he preferred cannabis, and it also seems that it helped him in his writings. I found that really intriguing. Now let's go ahead and have our recap. Number one. The Chinese physician in 200 AD, Hua Tuo, was supposed to have used anesthetic for the first time with cannabis and wine. Number two, the Emperor Lucius Domitius Aurelianus imposes a tax on Egyptian cannabis sometime during his reign between 214 and 275 AD. Number three, 751 AD, the Battle of Talas between the Muslim Caliphate and the Chinese dynasty. This lost China the control of the Silk Road and is also believed to be where they lost the secrets of their hemp paper. Number four, between 800 and 900 AD, the Islamic physician Rasis loves cannabis and prescribes it all over the place. However, the Arabic physician Ibn Wa Shia really hates cannabis and says that it could be a poison. Number five, the golden age of sailing with hemp sails. This was between 1000 and 1400 AD and started in Italy and made its way around the Mediterranean all the way to Northern Europe. Number six, in the 1500s AD, Henry VIII and his daughter Elizabeth I decreed that landowners grow hemp. Number seven, in the 1600s, William Shakespeare's pipes are supposed to have the residue of cannabis, cocaine, and tobacco, but mostly of cannabis, which is what he seems to have preferred. If you enjoy this video or you find it as intriguing as I do, please leave a like and a comment. Let me know what you think. And please don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button if you'd like to stay up to date with videos coming out in the future. And now, as always, Jay is going to go smoke a Jay.